What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. And once again, we appreciate everybody for rocking with us and riding with us and uh, hitting us up on Instagram, our social media, YouTube, you name it. We definitely appreciate it. Please keep leaving the comments. We read each and every last comment. Even we if do. we don't reply, we definitely read them. And also, you can always email us. That's thecaseycrew at gmail.com. That's T H. E-E, Casey Crew at gmail.com. So if you have comments, questions, or whatever it may be, you can always ask us, all right? Now, um, what I wanted to talk about today, if it's okay with you. <laughs> what? Is, you know, people always say you, you guys been together for a long time. Uh, how do you keep things fun? You know, how do you mm-hmm. keep things from being so boring? How do you keep things <laughs> going? How does the, the fire stay lit in your relationship? Not just sex life, but in a relationship as whole, mm-hmm. you know? And I had to really sit back and think, and I was like, well, you know, this is a tough one for me. It's tough. Yeah, Why this, would it be tough? Wait, 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 hold on. Don't move. Don't move. Let me, let me just turn your mic up. Cause again, we're at home. So we're broadcasting from, I got to turn your mic up just a little bit. I sound low to you. Just a little bit. I sound fine in my headphones. Now, that sounds go. too loud to me. No, you oh, sound Oh, that's great. distracting. You have to turn that down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Is that good? Yes, perfect. Okay. So um, I started thinking, you know, what it was, because I don't have many friends. Mm-hmm. I don't hang out on a weekend. Like, I, I've never been that person. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been together over 20 years, and I've never been the type of person to say, hey, I'm going to watch the fight with my boys, or right. I'm going to the bar to watch the game, or I'm going to watch March Madness with the fellas. You're I just, not even the type to go to the club with your friends on the weekend if you happen to not be working. Right. If I'm working, I'm, I don't care. You know, I'm going to take you. And I've always been like that. And, you know, like I said, we've been together over 20 years. I was trying to figure out, you know, what it was. I mean, to the point. Come on, you know, I'm just fun. Shut up. (laughs) Now, to the point where it's always you. And and it sounds corny. If everybody out there be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it sounds corny. But if you think about it, you know, when I leave to go to work, if I'm not listening to 1010 Wins, which gives me the news, me and you are having a conversation on the way to work. Right. Or on the way home. Then when I do, when I get to work, I do my job. And then when I get off on my way home, I'm talking to you on the way home. (laughs) Right. Then when I get home, (laughs) if I'm not taking a nap, we're watching TV together. Uh Uh-huh. Or doing something. And then if we're not watching TV, we're waiting for the kids to come home. We're nonstop under each other. Yeah, we are definitely a very up under each other kind of couple. And for a lot of people, that's a problem. They don't like each other that well. That much. Well, that much, that well. In a relationship, like they uh, they don't get along with their spouse or, you know, the person that they're with mm-hmm. that long. So they only stand spurts with each other. Right. And then you see a lot of people, males and females, that say, you know, I just got to get away from him or I just got to get away from her. Right. You know, I need I need Friday out with the boys or Saturday out with the girls or, you know, it's funny because. A lot of my girlfriends like to go on weekend trips together or, you know, just like little excursions and things like that. And whenever I get invited, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to miss my boo boo. Right. Of course, I'm going to miss my kids, but I don't really like to spend a weekend away from you if I don't have to. And it's not it sounds like bullshit, like hearing it (laughs) and thinking about it. it Why would it sound like bullshit? Because we're under each other all the time, like constantly, like for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when we argue with each other and, and let's say we're mad and we don't speak to each other for a couple of hours or a day, I think about like, all right, well, I'm going to go do this. And I think to myself, what am I going to (laughs) do? I'm going to go where I'm not going to do shit. Like (laughs) it it, it is what it is. So like the only time that we don't spend with each other. And this is probably the only time where I enjoy not being around you (gasps) is when I have to go to To the bathroom. No, well that too. (laughs) That definitely too. Close the door. But when I go out of town and the reason is, is so I can sleep. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's not, has nothing to do with you is we have five kids. And I was thinking last night, like, I really can't get no sleep in this house, Mm -hmm. you know, because when I finally do sleep, here's a little uh, chew Mm -hmm. jumping in our bed. Right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So last night I tried to sneak in the basement, right? 
for a second. Wait, how'd you sneak in the basement? Well, I, I figured I was going to, I had an hour to sleep. So I said, you know what? I had London. It was in between us. Oh, I was knocked out when you, you were tried knocked to sneak out. away. Oh, okay. and Brooklyn was Brooklyn and London was in our bed. Right. So I was like, you know, I'm which a, I don't recommend people. Wait, let me just let me just stop you for one second because okay. I don't want people to think that it's okay to let children sleep in their beds. Until Brooklyn came along, that was a hardcore rule in our house: no babies in the bed, even. You know, unless they're newborns and you're bonding initially, but once you get out of that bonding stage, get them out of your bed. The reason why our kids are in our bed, and it wasn't like this for Madison Logan, Madison and Logan, but now the reason is because Brooklyn sleeps in a bassinet in our room because her new nursery is too far away from our room. So she's seven months now. Uh-huh. I just like to keep her close. So when London and Jackson come running into our room in the middle of the night, if I tell them that they have to go back to their room, then starts the begging and the pleading and I'm so tired or I'm scared or whatever. And that conversation and the whining will wake up Brooklyn. Right. And who wants and to deal with that? Yes. And then when Brooklyn wakes up, it's all over. I'm up for another hour and a half. So to just keep the peace, to keep the sleep, to keep the quiet, I allow them in the bed because I don't want a big hoopla in our room. So that's the reason why I succumb to it. And it's not good. But maybe in about another two months, Brooklyn will be back in her nursery and the little rugrats are going to get sent back to their rooms. So let me tell you, last night I tried to sneak in the basement. I said, you know what? I'm going I'm to go in the basement. And um, I was really, my, my sneaker closet is downstairs. So I said, you know what? I'll go downstairs. I'll get my sneakers and I'll take a little nap. Mm-hmm. Madison I guess she doesn't want to be upstairs either because I guess she hears the babies. She made like a fortress down here. <laughs> Her 15 year old made a fortress. Uh, you know, a 15 year old made like a huge <laughs> fortress that's mad comfortable. Yes. So it's was, kind of amazing. She put two couches. We have um, these two sofas that they are kind of like puzzle pieces where they fit together if you put them together. So she put them together and it mm-hmm. kind of created a massive bed. Go ahead. Right. So I I came down here and I said, this is what I said. You know, I'm going to take a little nap here. So Madison was already in the fortress. So I was like, all right. She's just in the fortress. So I was like, all right. I was like, it's all good. I'll sleep with Madison in the fortress. Uh So when I got in the fortress, because it's dark, there was a kid down here. Yes. Jackson was down here. So Mm -hmm. I guess Jackson, he woke up and I guess he didn't want to be bothered in our bed because our bed probably had too many people in it. So he walked. Now he has more heart than me. And this is why I'm going to say this. I am a grown ass man in my thirties. Uh huh. I'm still kind of scared to go in the basement by myself. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Basement is dark. All types of noises. Freddie might jump out. I'm a grown, Jason might jump hey, out. I'm a grown. <laughs> Michael Myers might ass be around the corner. <laughs> man. <laughs> When it comes to this basement, I turn on every light. Like yeah. I make noise. I just don't I'm want coming n- down the stairs. Yes, I just don't want nothing <laughs> popping right. up out of me. Not those, not those snakes, uh-huh. a raccoon as it, nothing. Nope. Possums. So, but last night, you know, it was dark, so I I, I got in the bed and his. Jo- I'm like, how did Jackson get down here? Right. So I woke up Madison. I was like, what is he doing down here? And mm-hmm. she was like, he just came. He wanders around this house like he like a has grown no man. fear. Uh, and Jackson's our two year old. He'll come downstairs, chill, play with his toys, all sleep, by himself, all by in himself. the basement. So I couldn't get no sleep down here. So I didn't get much sleep last night. But I was just e- explaining that story. But that when it comes to our family, it's always. You know, I'm always up under you. And and and, and back to the question of, of where, where, where this started from, people always ask how. And I would say one thing about us is we're spontaneous mm-hmm. when it comes to everything. Mm-hmm. And I talked about the story the other day on the radio. Maybe you could help me. You know, um, we were talking about things you do to impress your spouse. And um, one spontaneous thing that Gia did for me was it was my birthday. Mm hmm. Uh, we don't have to tell what birthday because I don't. You don't have to age me. <laughs> okay. But I think it was my twenty first birthday. Definitely wasn't your twenty first. That's birthday. my story, and I'm sticking. <laughs> okay. With it. And she at su- about ten. She surprised me with a trip. Well, not even a trip. A skydiving adventure. <laughs> okay. 
where we live in Jersey. We would drive to Long Island and jump out of a plane for my birthday. So it kind of went like this, actually. I'm like, I need to do something different because, you know, Rashawn's the type of person. It's difficult to buy him something because whenever he wants something, he buys it himself. True. So it doesn't really leave much leeway for birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, Valentine's Days, whatever. So I said, you know something, let me surprise him with an experience. Right. Something that he would never do on his own. Correct. So it was about six o'clock in the morning. We wake up on his birthday and I get on top of him and I start shaking him. I was like, guess what we're doing today? And he's like, dinner. I was like, no, we're going skydiving. We're jumping out of planes, boo boo. And he just looked at me with this blank stare like who's jumping out of a plane? What what kind of plane? I said, we are driving to the Hamptons and in about three hours, we're going to be in a little propeller plane with little backpack strapped to our backs. And he was like, no way. I was like, go get in the shower. Get ready. We're about to leave. Now, for, for everybody out there listening, if you go to my Instagram, which is at DJ Envy or Gia's Instagram, which is Gia underscore Casey, when we post uh, about this podcast, we'll also post the picture of us jumping out the plane so you can see it. I posted one uh, quite some time ago, we'll maybe repo- on a third on a throwback Thursday or we'll something. We'll repost it. I'll even see if we could get the video. So oh, yeah. now mind you, we have the video. I'm all right, when it comes to being adventurous, my adventurous is going to the hood at night DJ and party. That's as, <laughs> that's as much adventure as I want. Dang, uh-huh. that's, that's all I want. I, I get everything I need there. Gia, she likes to do things like roller coasters. Mm-hmm. You ever go to Great Adventure or any of those amusement parks and they have the thing called the slingshot where they pretty much... Uh, they strap they, you up like a little piggy in a blanket and, and like they, Velcro. And they shoot you in the air and you're like on a little string going back and forth. Gear does that. Bungee jumping. And not only that, Gear and Logan does that. Yeah, it's my little partner. Me and Madison, we're kind of chicken butt. We just kind of chill. But... I do those things because I don't look like I I don't want to look like a punk or sissy. So I will always do. I never say no unless Logan's there. You didn't you wouldn't do the slingshot. No, because Logan did it. So I didn't have to. Yes. Logan took your place, but you refused to do it. You and Madison and that other there's another slingshot type of um, ride where you're sitting kind of like in a little cart or a little bucket, if you Mm -hmm. will, where they pull you all the way down and then they release the tension. And that one shoots you directly into the air. Right. And you wouldn't do that one. No. Don't don't lie. Don't no. say that you'll do certain things. No, there's certain You've things I don't want to do. You've definitely told me no. But there's, there's times if you really wanted to do it, I would, you know, tie up my suck bootstraps and suck mm-hmm. it up and go. And doing jumping out of a plane, I was like, okay, I'll do it. I didn't really want to do it. Oh, you definitely didn't want to I do it. I was like, F this, I'm going to die today. You were silent the entire Ride. A ride was about an hour and a to half Long to Island. hour forty five minutes to the spot in Long Island. Longer than that, but yeah. We invited uh, my parents. Yes. Well, I figured, and we now, took the kids. <laughs> at this time, it was only Madison and Logan. There were no little chews, and um, I said, you know what? Let me invite his parents and my mother, just in case anything goes wrong. This way, our parents will be there to see us for the last time in case we don't make it right so on our way to long island we stopped and we picked up my mother then we stopped and picked up Rashawn's parents and then we headed out so now we're all, and we brought the kids and we brought the kids so yeah, now we brought madison and logan as well so now we're out on long island and um now this is spontaneous gear let's do something spontaneous we're keeping the relationship <laughs> spicy i mean we didn't I say wasn't that trying to keep the relationship spicy that, i just like to do fun adventurous things right. that's what life is about living right well, or almost dying. But, or almost dying, I guess. So we get out there and, you know, first we go into this little trailer. It's like a it's like a small, uh, I don't want to say airport, but it's like a small airport. Yeah. Like a mini it's airport. like a mini airport with right. a hangar. Right. So right. It's, it's like a private airport. It's very small. Mm-hmm. There's no 747 or huge planes on there. Very small planes, prop planes, private planes. Well, on, let on me just airport. say, before I booked it, when I thought about skydiving, I pictured more so like 
army skydiving. So I'm picturing this huge plane that you can stand up in and they let the back hatch go and you're standing in the back and then you jump out of the plane that way. Oh, no, no, no. No, this plane is the size that of That is a, not what it's like a Honda Civic. at all. This plane is the size of a Honda Civic. Yes. No, and when I say Honda Civic, it's like a Honda Civic with wings. So mm-hmm. the four seats that's in a Honda Civic, that's as big as it is. Yes. So when we get there... You know, you go into a little trailer and you have to watch a video. And when after you watch the video, you have to sign a release. Now, the releases are so disrespectful. <laughs> it's not like, hey, you're, you know, you're about to skydive. You know, if anything happens, no, it's like you can die. If you die, you can't sue us. You can become paralyzed. If you become paralyzed, you cannot sue us. <laughs> you can have a heart attack. If on you have the way an heart down, attack on the way down, you, you cannot, cannot sue us. us. Yep. If you uh, break your neck, break your bone, break your face, it really did you break it down. You cannot sue us for anything. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you can't sue us for shit. That's basically what it said. So jump you, at your own risk. So you sign your freaking life away. It was like nine pages of jump at your own risk. Nine pages of you can't sue us for shit. You're going to be fucked up. That's you, how I took you it. You slid me the release and you're like, babe, I'm not sure about this. I was just like, well, I mean, if we're dead, we can't sue anybody. So <laughs> right. I mean, I believe in when it's your time to go, that's when you go. Fuck that. I don't want to play with it. Though. And not only that, if you have... Uh, insurance on your life, life insurance. And if you're out there, you should have life insurance. Even if it's small, it's not that expensive. If you're an adult, you should have life insurance. Absolutely. I mean, even if you don't have kids or, you know, because if you have life insurance, even if, even if it's 50000 or $25,000, it could be $25,000, $25 a month. It could pay for your month. funeral. It could pay for your funeral. Not mm-hmm. to say that you, you, you talk about those things, but it can help family. And, but the only thing is, if you die by jumping out of an airplane, you're not covered by your life insurance. Right. So if you die, you're on your own. If you die, you die. And that's one of the things. If you die, your life insurance may not cover this. So we sign our life away and then we walk to an airport hangar because now we have to get our parachute. Now, I don't know if you remember, but there was this young girl who looked like she was 18 or 19 that was packing the parachutes. I was just about to say that. Now, mind you, the young girl was about 18 years old. She had her headphones on, listening to music, packing her bag. And no, all, packing our bag. P- packing our parachutes. Mm-hmm. And all I was thinking about, if this little girl got into an argument with her boyfriend and was pissed off and didn't pack the bag right, if this little girl was not paying attention, if this little girl decided to, to do a, a juju on the beat instead of pack my bag, <laughs> I'm fucked up. <laughs> It, my my life depending, that could be a limb it could be a spine yes my life right. depending on this little 18 year old girl mm-hmm. she could have just been small friend. I don't know but my she life depending on this little girl and if, <laughs> and I was thinking to myself if this little if, what happens if this little girl just don't like me what happens uh-huh. if she listens to the radio and says you know what you're not my favorite DJ but realistically I'm not pack bag she right. was packing bag after bag after bag she was the one that was packing the bags for everybody that was jumping right. that day uh, she could get tired. No, no, I, I know. I know. She was packing all day. But we still did it. You but still talked me into Because I did my research on the place. They haven't had any accidents, any fatalities, no mishaps. What does that mean? It so was a very to, safe place to So today to we could have been They had the a day. wonderful record. But that could be anything. You could cross the street one day and get hit by a Mack truck. It can be your day. You never know. So well, that's why I look probability probability was on our side that day so i wasn't worried <laughs> so now we get our um our backpack and now we have to fly we have to jump tandem well first of all rashawn almost pooped his pants when he saw the plane you were shocked and appalled it looked like a little rinky dink plane and you cannot stand up in it you cannot stand up and put it like this you have to kind of like crawl into it in a sense and you are sitting on the floor of the plane. There, there no were seats. no seats. There are no seats on the there plane. There were no seats. And there are only five people can fit in the plane. And That's they only it. need five people. And it's four. the pilot, the two jumpers, and then the two tandem jumpers. So tandem means that... That's the person who is pretty much strapped to your back the professional. that jumps along with you, right. that guides the jumping experience. Right, right, right. So now we get in this plane, and now it's difficult to get in a plane. It's, it's like you, it's like you're crawling into a Honda Civic, Civic right. with uh, wings. wings. <laughs> so now there's the pilot. Now, this is so tight that the pilot's sitting here. They can't see you. The, I'm, or the pilot's sitting <laughs> The pilot's flying the plane, so he's on the left side of the plane, right? 
I'm sitting next to the pilot. So I'm his co-pilot. Right. Which I don't want to be, mm-hmm. but I'm there. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at it. And when I see this plane looks so basic, it doesn't look like a 747 Extremely that you've been basic. in. It looked like, oh, how can I describe this? For all it my, was some bullshit. For all my, oh, my old heads out there, it looked like a Atari. Like a what? Atari. The Atari video game. Oh, oh. With, with one joystick and two like, buttons. Like a good plane would be the Xbox? Yes. Okay. It was and, like, and this plane looked like the Atari? It felt like one <laughs> joystick and two buttons, right? Uh-huh. So now I get in and now I'm holding on to the dashboard of the plane oh, tight. My. I saw the veins popping out of your arms. That's you how were holding it so tight. That's how hard. But you're a chicken butt for that. I was, though. but, but you, go ahead. So gear is in the back with the two jumpers and they're joking and they're laughing <laughs> and they're talking. Me, I don't want to talk. I look at the door. Now, you know the door of a plane, you know, when you get on the plane, they close it and it sucks. No, that door that we were in on that plane was, was held by Velcro. Velcro. <laughs> Velcro. Right. So now I'm holding my ass tight as hell because I'm like, I can fall out this motherfucker. Uh-huh. Right. So now we go up. So my guy is like, all right, so this is what we can do. We can jump out. We can flip out. We can do like a spiral jump. We can do this. We can do that. We're going to free fall for about 10, 15 seconds. Do you want to flip? I was like, yeah, I want to flip. I was like, I want to do anything. Anything you want to do, I'm down. They're like, Mr. Casey, do you want to flip out of the plane? I'm like, fuck you and your friends <laughs> and your family and your mother. No disrespect. And your, and your effing flip. Yes. I don't want I don't want to do nothing. How about that? I just want to jump out of here as straight as possible. Pull a shoe. Uh, uh-huh. As soon as I can and get down to the motherfucking ground. <laughs> I said immediately, fuck all your flips. And he's like, you sure we can flip? No, fuck you and your flip. My foot doesn't mm-hmm. want to get caught in the cord. I don't want to die today. <laughs> the cord wouldn't be out by the I time that you flip, don't silly. don't care. And I'm thinking uh-huh. to myself, I'm going to die and my kids are going to see me die. <laughs> so now we get up in the plane and they, you know, we're, we're flying. So now we're so far in Long Island. If you know anything about Long Island, you always hear the Hamptons. Now the Hamptons is where all the rich people go in the summer right they all have houses out there i think mm-hmm. jennifer lopez had a house howard stern had a house and some more uh Just russell people, simmons whatever diddy all have houses in the hamptons right so i think the kardashians running a house in the, out there one time so now we fly so we see the hamptons and it looks beautiful mm-hmm. right so they're like okay it's time to go so i'm like <laughs> go where it's like it's time to jump so he was like all right mr casey let's go so he hooks himself to me so uh-huh. he, he, he licks links up and he's like, all right, let's go. You have to uh, step out. So I was like, my, what do you mean? My knee won't move. <laughs> he said, what? I said, my leg won't move. He said, no, we got to go. I said, my leg cannot move. Yes, yes. I said, you I were cannot. acting like you were paralo- paralyzed. I was. So mind you, they're kneeling in the doorway. So the door is open. The Velcro is released. It's them and the sky. So now you're looking out the door and all you see is sky. You see the wing of the plane. You see the water down below. You see the water down below. And they're like, come on, let's go. And I'm like, mm. I can't. My leg won't go. I'm like, my leg don't want to go, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like, I really want to go, but my leg is like, nah, B. So now he's mad at me because I'm joking him and insulting his masculinity from the back of the plane. I'm like, nah, B. I, I didn't care what you said. You could have said, you, you, you wimp, you sissy. I didn't call you a sissy. I don't care what you call me because all my response was going to be your mother. That's uh-huh. it. Because I wasn't going. And then I was like, you know what? I'm up here. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay. Which is, which is Rashawn for the tandem guy pushed him out of the plane. He didn't push me out. Yes, he, he did. No, he didn't. He didn't push me out. He nudged you out of the plane and you, you technically fell out of the I plane. I fell you out of the plane. Jump. It wasn't I like, just let my body no, go. No, 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 no. He did not it push wasn't me out like, the plane. all right, I'm up here. I'm just going to make the most of this. You I'm going to be a man. No. He nudged you out of the plane. I watched it. Why you, why you, why you, why you, why you want to lie on me? <laughs> He You're did not. A liar. Oh he my did God. not push me out. You're such a fiver. Nope. I'm going to let you live. Nope. No. I'm gonna let you live. Go so ahead. what happened was when I, I, I the door opened up and I said, "I, right, you know what? Let's do this." So I, <laughs> <laughs> what? It was so funny. Not that. Go ahead. So I said, "Let's do this." So I stood there with my hands in the air. I put my hands up in the air and I was like, "Let's go!" And I jumped out. Okay, now pause for one second. So I'm sitting there, and the moment that they fell out of the plane was the moment that it became semi real for me because. I'm looking at them and I'm like, wow, they were just here and now they're not. Shit, my husband just jumped out of a plane. He technically, he just jumped out of a plane and I'm about to go next. And it all became real for me. But 
I was still cool with the idea, but I remember that feeling like, wow, a baby just jumped out of a plane. You know, the, the crazy thing about it is when I jumped out of the plane, I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know if it was going to be rough or, you know, if they pull the string right away. So when you jump out the plane, it's kind of like you're flying, you're floating oh, yes. for like, it feels it feels like 60 seconds. It's not that long. I mean, how much, how many, it was like, what, 20 seconds? It, it wasn't even 20. You free fall for about maybe between 10 and 15 seconds, I would surmise. And when she says free fall, that means no parachute. It's just you flying in just the air. Just you falling towards the earth. And it, it feels like you're a bird. Like you are floating, your arms are out, and it just feels so gentle. The air is hitting you. You, you The view is beautiful. Uh, and then uh, in 15 seconds, they, they pull a parachute, and then you just start you floating. You float down to earth And then gently. you just float so smooth, uh, and it's so calm, and you can just see everything. Everything that you wanted to see. If you're not afraid of heights, I'm not a height person. Meaning I don't like roller coasters. Mm-hmm. When the roller coaster gets to the tippy tippy point, my eyes are usually closed and I'm usually <laughs> bracing myself. He's but, not the guy that's going to put his arms in the air and but, be like, Ooh! no, that's not him. Fuck that. No way. <laughs> so I'm the guy that's just going to, you know, so we, it, it was such a relaxing and smooth and, and dope experience. And then when I looked up, so now what well, I just tell you, I kind of just fell out the plane. No, you didn't say that. I said that and you lied and said, I was See? joking. They knew I was joking. I didn't jump out no damn plane with my hands up like Superman. I was scared like shit. Uh-huh. I kind of just fell out. Now, gear jumps out. They jump out doing flips. <laughs> they spinning. Now, when they pull their parachute, they doing tricks with the parachute, yeah. doing twi- you know, twists and turns. I'm like, she's going to fuck around and kill herself. <laughs> but not for nothing. That 10 to 15 second free fall for anyone who's ever considered it is the single best feeling that I have ever felt in my life. Yeah, it was it was an amazing experience. It was amazing. We got to the ground, we landed on our feet. It wasn't like, you know, some people they have rough landings. No, we landed great. It was great. It was so good that Gia and I started looking up jumping clubs on the way home Rashawn was like can we do this again yeah it was it was I was like no they're booked for the day but we can definitely come back and on the way home we were talking about we should join an adventure club if we can't find one we should start an adventure club you know we can travel the world we can go to New Zealand because New Zealand is really known for like high adventure type of activities and sports and things like that we're like we can travel with our friends and do this and do that and I was like all right let's google it so I google it and it brings me to YouTube videos right and then we started to see skydiving accidents right I don't want to tell people about that (laughs) Because if they thinking about doing it, I want them to have a good time and let them think about doing it because we had a good experience. No, we did have a wonderful experience. So I just experience. wanted to talk about some of the spontaneous things that we do. Because if you go that route, then everybody who just heard that story is going to be like, fuck that, I ain't doing it. But I mean, put it this way. In the same sense, you can think, all right, well, I would never drive a car because cars get into accidents. People drive cars anyway. So the number of accidents yeah. into the number, the rela- the number of people on the road yeah. is minuscule. Motherfuckers ain't Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, that's a little different. All right, so I'll, I'll listen. Well, but my point is that the number of accidents pale in comparison and it's it's similar to driving a car so that's not something that should deter you from the experience all right so you know looking online i started looking up a bunch of skydiving things and cool things to do and then you started seeing skydiving mishaps Mm -hmm. you know uh people because you get to videotape it so people videotaping themselves and the parachute mm -hmm. not opening or people jump in and then the parachute gets caught on a plane somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. Um, people jump in and, you know, people get caught in the electrical lines. We did see that one. One person jumped out and their parachute, well, they got tangled in the electric line and they got electrocuted. Yeah. So we seen a lot of mishaps, which said, you know what, maybe that one jump was enough and we just left it. At yeah. Like that. we survived. So no need to really go and ahead and do it. it again. We had a good time. It was definitely worth it. So that's some of the spontaneous things that we do in our relationship. Something else is, I mean, I remember one time where, um, Guy and I, and I know a lot of you probably did this when when you were a lot younger, but we went to a comedy show in Jersey, mm-hmm. and you know on what the way back, about? on the way back I think we went to go see Damon Wayans perform in Jersey, by Brunswick. Yeah, Brian Brunswick. Uh huh. And on the way back, uh, we were horny, <laughs> and decided to pull over and have sex. So the only <laughs> only place that oh, we 
that we pulled over it was a Chinese food <laughs> restaurant. You remember? So we were in the, this wasn't that long ago. And this was in the back of the alley. So it was a Chinese like food restaurant. Line. And we were in the alley. So we pulled up in the alley and we were going at it. Uh, and the it sunroof just, was open. The sunroof was open and everything. We were in the car. I think Gia's head was out the sunroof. We were going uh, at it. Windows it's down. Out the sun. Because you know, when you start going at it, you know, the, the car start fogging up. So the windows are down and we're going at it in the car. Oh my God. And I guess the Chinese food man. <laughs> had to throw some boxes out. So he walks out to throw the boxes out and sees us. And he throws he the box. started cursing us no, no, out in China. No, no, no. At first he didn't. He he, he threw the box and we, we paused. Uh-huh. And then he went back in. Uh-huh. And, and then we was like, oh, he didn't see us. And then we continued. Uh-huh. And then he came back out and started cursing us out he in Chinese. cursing us out in Chinese. He was, yeah, he was calling us all types then of things. Then he called sure. some other people from inside the restaurant out. To come and see us, I right. guess it might have been the chef and the manager. Who knows? And then he was like, "We're gonna call the police. We're gonna call the police." And we just stopped and we took off. Right. I remember driving with no pants on. I had no pants on trying yeah. to drive. To but get then the hell you out of pulled there. over into another parking lot. <laughs> and we had to finish. Absolutely, I had to get that nut out. I had to finish. Absolutely, positively, lutely. Oh, I didn't know the spontaneous conversation was going to go there. But okay. it just shows that, you know, no matter what in life, sometimes you just have to be spontaneous with with, with things that you do. And sometimes you, you don't have to plan everything out. And I think that's one thing that, you know, you brought to this relationship as, as far as spont- uh, spont- I don't know, what's spontaneity. The, there you go. That's the mm. word I was looking for, <laughs> um, you know, which is a great thing because it always keeps the relationship fresh. It always keeps things fun. And even with kids, uh, you know, sometimes we wake up and just like, you know, let's go to the amusement park or mm-hmm. let's go here. And the kids have no idea mm-hmm. and they love it. Like, you know, even when we go to, to sports games, it's like, yo, today's a Sunday. The Giants are playing. What are we doing? Nothing. Let's just go to the game. And the kids just love it because it's not mm-hmm. planned. It's just like, oh, and the excitement that the whole yes. family gets is like no other. I like to do things like that. And I remember when I was younger. I had a conversation with my mother and I asked her, you know, I was always inquisitive. So my mom would tell me about things about her life and her past and her upbringing, her Mm -hmm. childhood, things of that nature. And I remember asking her once, so mommy, tell me, like, what was it that made you fall in love with daddy? Mm -hmm. Like, what was, you know, the big thing for you that made you think, well, if I left him, I'd really be lacking on on this. Right. What did she say? And she said that, Well, she said a couple of things, but she said your father was a lot of fun Mm. and he was very spontaneous. And I really like that because my mom was all about having fun and doing things to enjoy herself. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, your dad was the type that he would get up on a Saturday morning and be like, you know what, Norma, my mother's name is Norma. You know, what, Norma, let's just drive to Maryland. And she would go and throw some stuff in a bag and they'd take off. Or another weekend, he would wake up and be like, you know what, Norma, let's just go and drive to Niagara Falls. You know, the funny thing about it, I remember all these stories. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. You know, my dad would wake up and be like, you know what, let's take a flight to Miami. Let's, you know, I want to go to the beach today. So, you know, let's go and spend a few days in Miami. He was just like that. And she said that she loved that about him because it's not something that she ever found in other guys. Right. You know, and that kind of set set him apart from other men. And um, the other thing that she said that she loved about him was that he was very protective Mm. and they could be out somewhere and she can get into something and it could be a hundred percent her fault, but he would defend her and protect her. Mm. And then when they got in the car on the way home, he might chew her head off absolutely, or, you know, curse her or whatever, because she might have done something or said something that she shouldn't have. But when it was the two of them together, no matter what, she was always right. And he always had her back. Mm. And she said that those were the two things that really set him apart from other men. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's <laughs> that's the thing. And that's that's one thing for everybody who always asks about our relationship. Everything is is we try to be spontaneous, whether it's me, whether it's it's gear planning something. It's just try to do something fresh that's not expected. But our goal in this house, not just between you and I, but like you said earlier with the kids, it's always to have fun. Right. Like we have a lot of fun and we turn 
everything into an opportunity to have fun. So like you and I play fight a lot. Right. But I also play fight a lot with Logan. So Logan and I will be on the floor in the middle of the living room, like trying to get each other in the dope fiend, choking each other, wrestling moves, things like that. And he loves that. Right. He you, loves that. You know what? And before we get to the to the email of the week, it just made me think of something how spontaneous you are regardless. I remember we were at a football game and the kids just won. Mm-hmm. And um, we were walking off the field and gear ran and dove tackled <laughs> Logan. <laughs> and all the parents were looking like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And you tackled Logan on the floor. <laughs> Now, mind you, Gia is wearing Jordan's sweats and a hoodie. It's kind of cold outside. And she uh-huh. bodies, Logan has all his equipment on. Right, right. Tackles Logan on the floor, right? <laughs> so now Logan falls on the floor. He still has his helmet on, I believe. So uh-huh, he gets he up and now they're wrestling <laughs> on the floor, which embarrassed the shit out of me. I'm like, what's wrong with these two idiots? And they're, they're rolling on the floor on the dirt. And the dirt is flying up everywhere. And, and Logan is tackling her and she is is fighting back and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with these two but that's the type of spontaneous and then you know when we got up you know what he said he's like i love you so much mommy yeah because you you guys are idiots but you know that but that's how logan and i have fun fun we play fight here we wrestle he used to be on the wrestling team so you know he'll do he'll practice his moves on me and things like that and it's just I don't know. I think that it's important to really live. Right. And, you know, if you're going to sing, sing loud. If you're going to dance, dance crazy. Just do whatever it is that makes you happy and never worry about what other people think. Never worry about other people's judgment. Gotcha. You know, like when I drive in the car by myself, I turn the music up and you would think that there was a party in there. And I don't care if other people are passing by like, okay, what's up with this crazy girl? You know, it doesn't matter to me when I'm doing my makeup, I put my music on and you know, whatever. If I'm doing something with Madison, I'm going to do it to the max. Like everything that I do, I try to find opportunities to find the most enjoyment in it that I possibly can. And I have to say, that makes me such a happy person. I have Absolutely. to say, like, I'm I'm a very happy person because I try to take as many opportunities to enjoy life. Right. You know, I think that a lot of times people, if things aren't going right in their life or to their satisfaction, it's kind of like they take that and, you know, obviously they recognize it and they kind of succumb to it. You know, like, okay, I might be having a financial issue or I might be having a relationship issue. I might be having a family issue. I might be having a job issue. And it's easy to let situations like that dominate your life and really suck you down and weigh on you. It's easy to wear it and to carry it around on your back. And when you're going through things, sometimes it's hard to find the joy in life. But what I believe And not in just this situation, but all types of situations, you have to be deliberate about things. Right. You have to make up your mind to feel a certain way, to be a certain way. And if you kind of stay the course, if you're focused and you stay the course, you kind of live yourself into that reality. You know, if you make up your mind to be happy, then despite some of the things that you may be going through, of course, you'll go through it momentarily and, you know, have to deal with it at the time. But instead of the time that comes thereafter being horrible and depressing, if you're deliberate and you live your way out of that, I think that that's a way to try to find happiness. Right. Absolutely. I agree with you. And I, and I, and I think that you're absolutely right with that. And I think it's, it's all about finding your happy point and making sure that life remains happy and it remains in a place where you guys can always have fun, no matter how long you guys been together. Right. Now let's get to the email of the week. Now this email I picked because I think you know uh, somewhat about this. Okay. Now, her name is Laura. Mm -hmm. Now, she says, hey, guys, I want to stop birth control, but my husband still isn't ready. Now, the reason I said you know about this because you was on birth control, it probably has nothing to do with you, but you know birth control. (laughs) Okay. She goes, hi, if my email is chosen, please refer to me as Laura. If it doesn't get chosen, I'm hoping I can still get a response. Okay, so Laura's not her name. Okay. 
First, I just want to say thank you for this podcast. It is awesome. And I love you guys and the advice you give. My husband and I have been together for seven and a half years and married for 10 months. He has known from the beginning of time that I've always wanted children, but he is not ready. I'm constantly hoping each day he will tell me I can stop my birth control, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. And he won't even give me a time frame as to when he may be possible or ready or when I can stop my pills. I am nervous about conceiving since I have been on birth control for 10 plus years straight. It will Mm. take a while for my body to regulate and for the pills to get out of my system. Right. He's afraid that children will make our, uh, what is that? He is afraid that children will make our lives come to a complete stop. Revolve around him and scared that I will love our children more than him Mm -hmm. and put him on the back burner. He is also afraid that I may be on his case more and not let him go out or hang out with his friends because he'll be a father and have responsibilities at home. Mm. I think he really thinks things that will be will drastically change even our marriage. What do you suggest? Well, the issue isn't really about the birth control pills. The issue is the fact that he doesn't seem as though he wants children. And she says, P.S., how has your relationship changed since you had your children? Do you wish you have waited a little longer before you had your first? No way. Also with children, how have you made sure to keep your marriage alive? What we talked about earlier and spend quality time together. I really hope you guys can help and give some great advice. So what do you think? I think that his issue is that he doesn't necessarily want children. And based on what she described, it seems as though he probably won't want them until all of his fun years are over. Right. And he's ready to settle down but that's as a, problem. a family man. But that's a problem because she's ready to have kids now. That's a big problem. And where it seems as though it's going to end up because it's difficult to convince somebody opposite of their convictions. You know, I think that he believes that just like she said, he won't be able to go out with as much with his friends, especially because listen, she has a point if she throws the whole, you know, you're a father, you can't be going out on the weekends and He probably thinks that some of the sexiness will be pulled out of their relationship and it can pose a lot of different problems. And it it seems as though he wants to deter that for as long as possible. But she's ready now. I wish she would have told us their ages because that might have a lot to do with it. You know, if they're 23, 24, I can understand that. And you can say, all right, well, maybe just wants to enjoy the marriage for a year old. No, but they've been together for 10 years. It's different being together and being married for some Um, people. people, I don't really think so. Not if you've been together for 10 years. You don't get married 10 months ago and then all of a sudden everything changes. No, because it could be off and on. It could be they could be together off and on. Maybe they didn't live with each other. Maybe now, you know, when a lot of people get married, they combine everything, combine finances, combine household bills, combine. Right. But that's the business of the relationship. And uh, they live with each other. The only difference may or may not be that they live together. Right. Most likely if they've been together for 10 years, they probably lived together before they got married. But maybe not 10 years, though. Maybe not 10 years, but even if they live together for a year or for two years or however long. Maybe they're enjoying that time. Maybe he's enjoying that time. There's not going to be that much of a difference aside from the business of the relationship if you've been together for 10 years. So what do you say? They got married 10 months ago. I don't think that their relationship relationship has probably changed. So what do you suggest she does? Because he undoubtedly does not, or I don't want to say does not, is not ready for kids. First thing I want to say is don't do nothing sneaky. Don't get off the birth control pill and have this baby because he will, he will resent you and he will resent that child. So don't even think about that. That take that out your mind. Right. That'll be the demise of your the relationship. relationship. Right. A lot of women will sneak, get off a pill, get pregnant, and then say, Oh, I guess we were that one percent or that two percent. He's not going to buy it. Nope. And that would be a baby being conceived in deception. Right. And nothing good can come of that aside from the life of your child. So that shouldn't even be an option. The only thing that she really can do is have a heart to heart with him. But it seems as though they probably already did that. She's on one side of the fence. He's on the other side of the fence. So what about an ultimatum though? 
Never. You because can, you cannot give somebody I mean, but an you, ultimatum because hopefully to, they got married for the right reasons. She married him, I'm hoping, because she's in love with him right. and because she believes that he can't be replaced by another. And I'm hoping that he married her for the same reason. So that's really at the root. But, of a relationship, not the idea of having children. Children come from the root of that love. But if you do love somebody, so you don't just forsake somebody. Their, their kids could possibly be in their plans and in their of course, future. of course. But you, know, but you don't give somebody an ultimatum and say, if you don't see things my way, then you have to hit the road. No, not my way. But let's. Pick a time period. But that's not an ultimatum. That's an agreement. All right. Well, let's make this agreement. Let's say you want to have your fun. You don't want to be a father for how long? Two years. So that's called a compromise. Two years. Let's comp. Well, that's what she needs to do with it. I agree with two you. years. Have a compromise. If not, then I'm gonna knock off your best friend, and then he's gonna put a baby in me, and I'm gonna have one regardless. Awesome. I'm just joking with that. But they need to get an agreement. And say, okay, this is the time period. Mm -hmm. I understand that you're not ready yet. And you don't want to force anybody to be ready. And I can respect you. I can respect that. Not being ready. Right. If you want to live a little bit more before we take on a larger responsibility in the form of a child, I can respect that. But that's difficult. But you also have to respect the fact that I want to be a mother and I don't want to wait until another five years, depending on how old they are. I may not want to wait. So why don't we come to a compromise where you get a little bit of what you want and I get a little bit of what I want because that's what being married is about. But the bad part about it is for women, and I feel bad for women because a lot of women have careers. So she might feel like, you know what? I want to have this baby now so I can get on my career. So now you're saying, let's wait. So am, am I supposed to wait in my career? Because now if I'm driving for what I want to drive, let's say I want to be a a, a lawyer or a judge or a doctor, whatever, I have to take off time to raise my child. And that's time, which is, you know, they might not be able to afford a nanny. And it might be difficult to take it. But you're throwing in all types of potential hypothetical situations that may not even apply (laughs) to their situation. You know what? I'm going to be honest with him. Man the fuck up. Like uh, having a child is a great, great thing in your life it doesn't take it doesn't require a lot of money you know yes it does require for money for some people no babe. it doesn't no to be honest I, like children for some people had, what you may not no, think is a lot of money true. may be a lot of money that's not for true. somebody else that's not true people think pampers that, may not be a lot of money no, to you let me finish let me finish they, people when people think of having a children they think babies are expensive because i thought the same thing Like I thought that, you know, a baby was going to cost us a million dollars a year and we weren't going to be able to afford it and we were going to be living and eating out of trash. But it wasn't out of trash. Well, you know what I mean? (laughs) But it wasn't. We, you know, pampers and food. Yes, that is it. But all you really need is love. When we first had Madison, we didn't live in a in a, a palace. We didn't live in a, a huge house. We lived in your mom's basement mm-hmm. and we made it work. Mm-hmm. We made it work and it had nothing to do with money, had nothing to do with how much clothes cost and this, that, and the other. It had to do with love. And we loved that child and we made it work. And now I'm not going to say that babies are free, but you can make it work, you know, and you have to be a man and say, my wife wants a child and my wife wants a child right now. She doesn't want six children. She wants a child. Give her that child. But what you're not taking into consideration is that I was an at-home mother. So you worked. I was at home. So you didn't have to take into consideration daycare. So for us, you can say, all right, well, a baby is really pampers, formula if you are not breastfeeding, um, whatever clothes and clothes don't have to be expensive. Um, But then when they get a little bit older, you know, when they're, you know, the typical time where mothers are off of maternity leave, then you have to take into consideration daycare. And that's where children become expensive. True. So where you're coming from, you're like, oh, it's just, you know, pampers, food, a little bit of clothes. No. Who's going to care for that child when two parents are at work? Grandma. Well, grandma may not be around. 
Grandma may not be alive. Auntie. Grandma may not be willing. Best friend. Grandma may not be able. Somebody can help. No, but, but you can't employ your friends and you're family right. to you're take right. on your responsibility. You're right. So now you have to think about daycare. And daycare can be, I'm just going to throw a number out there, $500 a week, which is $2,000 a month. Yeah, a and lot. some people don't have right. $2,000 a month to spend on daycare. You proved your so, point. So taking care of a baby based on, you know, making the, the decision of having a baby has to be a forethought and people have to know that they can afford it. So I don't know if that's part of his reason why he also doesn't want to do it, but it sounds like they may be able to afford it. His issue seems to be my life is going to come to an end and I'm not really willing to take on that life changing catalyst All that's right. going to spearhead my life off into like grown manness and boredom and everything. I want to, you know, be able to go out with my friends. I want to be able to go to the club. I want to be able to have good sex with my wife. I don't want a kid that's going to throw any salt in that game. So what he has to understand is that just like you said a little while ago, having a child is the single greatest thing that you can do in this world in my opinion. And the amount of joy that a child brings to your life is immeasurable. Correct. Where the club and quality sex and sleep just kind of don't even matter. And I don't want to say they don't matter because of course they're important, but it right. pales in comparison to the amount of happiness that a baby can bring you. So I think that he really does need to come to terms with that. But she also has to respect the reasons why he doesn't want to have a child, which is why I don't think that an ultimatum is, I don't think that an ultimatum is good in most situations. So I think that they really just need to talk. And I think what you said earlier was wonderful coming to a compromise. I give a little, you give a little. Right. Now, if he doesn't agree to coming up with a compromise, now you have a problem. Because now, at that point, it becomes a measure of disrespect and a lack of consideration. Correct. He's not considering your maternal feeling and the fact that you want to start a family at this point in your life for whatever reasons that you have. So a person that's not willing to bend, that's not willing to compromise, that's a little bit of a greater issue. And then you have to think about your relationship and, you know, how much, how much willingness that he has to make you happy and to do the things that will make you happy. So what was the other part that she asked? Like, how do we, she asked, uh, how know. did our life change once we had, right. Listen, we took Madison everywhere. Right. We should. She, I mean, and not just me, because as a mother, of course, you're going to dress her up. You're going to put her in her, her little cute stroller. You're going to put her in her baby carrier. You're going to go to the mall. You're going to go grocery shopping. You're going to go to your families. You're going to go to the beach. You're going to go to the park. You're going to go to the zoo. When you have your first child, you want to show that child off everywhere. Yeah. But it wasn't just me. Rashawn was just as bad. I'm like, all right, we need to go grocery shopping. Let's bring Maddie. No, we're going to the grocery store. It's cold in there. Like, there's no point. I just want to bring her everywhere. He wanted to bring her yeah, everywhere, her everywhere because he enjoyed her. I mean, I bring her everywhere now. So much. Yeah, we, <laughs> we bring, bring her everywhere, everywhere now. now. <laughs> no matter what, I, you know. But, yeah. you know, so, so to ask, yeah, our life changed for, for better. For the better. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that it, it slowed down. It's we like we really enjoy our kids. We really have a lot of fun and I think that, you know, if you you guys decide whatever whatever if it take if it's a month or if it's 6 months or if it's 4 years, you know, that gift of having a child and being able to take your children everywhere is 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 an amazing feeling. And you have to think we were young when we had Madison. We got married at 22 and we had her the same year. So Nothing stopped at, let me tell you, my mother lived in, and then we, you know, we moved to New Jersey and my mother still lived in Queens and she was a wonderful grandmother. I could drop my kid off whenever I not, wanted. Not she was, she is. 
Well, she is, but she was particular. My mother has dementia now, so there's a lot of things that she can't do right now. But back then when she was, you know, able, she was so willing. And, you know, I would drive to New York and drop Madison and Logan off. And then I'd drive back to New Jersey. And then Rashawn and I would enjoy our weekend together. Right. So if you have help, if you have a mother or if you can afford a babysitter or a nanny or something like that, even if it's just for weekends, that could could be your sexy time with your husband. That could be his sexy time with you where, you know, during the week, most people are going to work anyway. They come back home and, you know, they only have their evenings together to have dinner and, you know, to have a little bit time after at night. So a child doesn't really get in the way during the week. It's when you want to go out on the weekends where you don't have to go to work or anything like that. So if you can get some type of child care situation in for the weekends, then your relationship doesn't suffer. So for Rashawn and I, I felt like we had the best of all worlds. We had our beautiful children that we enjoyed. We did things on the weekends with them when we wanted to. When we wanted to spend time, just the two of us, we had childcare in some way, shape or form, and we enjoyed ourselves in that way. So it didn't, our kids didn't stop, as my mother would say, they didn't stop no show. Right. So I think that the answer is a compromise. There you go. I I absolutely positively agree with you. Um. Yeah, and you made me change my mind because I was gonna be like, give him an ultimatum. But no, you're right. You're absolutely positively right. Compromise is the key. Nobody ever wants to do anything under duress or under right. pressure. Right. And you know, it only breeds resentment. And we ask you, quote unquote, Laura, uh, <laughs> when you do figure it out, please let us know. We'd love to uh, hear what happens. And when you guys do have the baby, send us pictures. Okay. We'd love to see the baby. All right. Well, now let's get to the argument of the week. This is a good one. I mean, you know nothing about this, so let me just... Uh, I know nothing about the email or I know nothing about the topic? Nothing about the topic. Oh. My wife doesn't want to give me oral sex. When she... <laughs> what? Let me finish. Why do you always have to be so stupid? <laughs> My wife doesn't want to give me oral sex when she always used to. Hey guys, Uh, first off, the podcast is amazing. I'm writing because I have a problem in my marriage. My wife has a problem with giving me oral sex. We have had been together for 18 years and married for nine and she was doing it for 16 of the 18. Now she says she doesn't like it and says she's not doing it anymore. Oh wow. To me, she is uh, completely selfish. (laughs) What? What's so funny? That that was funny. Completely selfish for denying me something she has been doing our whole relationship. (laughs) And uh, am I crazy or is she selfish or is there a deeper problem? Matt from Detroit. Matt from Detroit. It sounds like there's a deeper problem. You want me to you want me to start? No, wait, let me start. Okay, go ahead. Let me start. If she did it for 16 of the 18 years, I think it's one of two issues. I think it's A. A hygiene problem. I was going to say that. Maybe his ball like, stink. Like a physical problem. Maybe his ball stink. It's possible. Mm-hmm. It can be a physical problem that is deterring her from that area of your body where she wants no parts of it. Mm-hmm. That can be one thing. The second thing, listen, as women in particular, and, I, and of course men enjoy pleasing their women as well, but I think... That for women in particular, we like to please our men. We like for them to get up from the bed or stay in the bed feeling satisfied, feeling happy, feeling like, wow, that was really something. For a woman to not care about pleasing you, there's something going on in her psyche. There is a reason why she doesn't care. And... I'm going to speak to you on this. There there have been times in our relationship mm-hmm. where... Don't put me in this. I'm putting you in this. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not in a sexual way, but there have been times in our relationship where you might have done something in particular or we might have been going through a short period of time where I was dissatisfied with something. Right. And tell me if you remember, I would say to you, listen, the worst thing that you can do for yourself and for our relationship is to get me to a point where I don't care. Mm -hmm. Because if I get to a point where I don't care, then all bets are off. Mm -hmm. If I don't care about pleasing you, if I don't care about your happiness, if I don't care about respecting you, that's a danger zone. Right. Because it's like anything goes. 
And there might have been times where I might have felt like there were things that you didn't care about. So I would reciprocate by not caring as well. Right. And that's just that's an area in any relationship you just don't want to delve into because nothing good comes from that. So she was doing it all this time. I doubt that your hygiene has changed. Well, the, well, <laughs> you know, it, it could, it, it's possible, but I'm thinking it, it's possibly deeper than that. You must have done something or, or they might be going through a period where she's harboring resentment, where she just doesn't care. Like, oh, really? You're dissatisfied? Oh, <laughs> oh, well. Or, oh, you want a little bit ahead? Oh, well, I'll pass you the lotion. But when you get a woman to a point where she doesn't care about your happiness, Mm -hmm. furthermore, she doesn't care whether she's pleasing you or not, that means that she's not even into doing it for her own ego and her own self-gratification. It seems as though she's at a point where she's just over it or over something, probably a period that you guys are going through. So you have to stop and ask yourself, are you guys happy? Are you in a happy relationship? Is there something that you're doing that is irritating her or upsetting her? Because if you are, then that can be a direct reason why she is not interested in whether you are satisfied happy, content, or anything else. It seems as though she's dejected herself from the relationship and said, all right, well, you know, like a person that that kind of has that in their mind is a person that just, she's already separated herself. So you have to ask yourself, what have you done or what state is your relationship in? Because when you're happy with somebody and they're doing everything to please you and, you know, it's like they can't wait to see you when they get home. You know, most people can't wait to be intimate with one another. You would think, okay, you know, she wouldn't be able to wait to please you while you're being intimate. Those are like the products of a happy relationship. And if she's not interested in doing that, hello, she's probably not happy. Right. See, it could be that or it could be the fact that, I mean, one of his balls think that could be a problem. But the difference (laughs) with that is, is, I mean, like, yeah, you know, if balls think the balls think, sometimes you got to do what you got to (laughs) do. Now, when it comes to as far as relationship, it could be maybe she's trying to prove a point. Maybe she feels that you're not pleasing her in a way and that she really wants you to understand what it feels like not to be pleased. And she wants you to concentrate more time on her. Or it could be that she's not emotionally connected, meaning maybe, like you said, maybe there's something there's else something. wrong and something else deeper that you need to have a conversation about. And if you have the conversation and don't say, hey, you're not giving me oral because of this. You just say, hey, what's going on? And, you know, we don't seem connected. Let's talk. Maybe that'll get you back to the point. And if all that doesn't work when she's sleeping Get yourself a little lotion. Put it right on her cheek. Let it know exactly what it is. Right on her cheek. Okay. Right on her cheek. Right. And I'm not talking about ass cheek. Right on her (laughs) face. Right there when she's sleeping. And don't even tell her. She'll feel it warm on her. Just be prepared for a black eye if you choose to take Rashawn's advice. I'm just telling you what it is. That's what you might need to do. She might wake up swinging. She might wake up swinging or she might make up horny. It it could be, it could go either way. She's not going to wake up horny and don't take that advice because Rashawn is just silly. You really need to. I might have to do that tonight. Sit down. I'm ignoring you right now and I'm looking over here. I'm not even going to put it on your cheek, right on your forehead. (laughs) Bong. You really need to get to the root of what the problem is. Just like Rashawn said, sit down. Don't lead with, hey, why aren't you pleasing me me the way that you used to? Sit down and say, you know what, is there something wrong? Is there something on your mind? You know, how do you look at our relationship? Are you happy? Am I pleasing you? And I don't even mean sexually. Am I pleasing you in our relationship? How do you, what's your overview of of our marriage, of our relationship. And then try to fish out some answers because you may be surprised. She may tell you that she has problems with things that you as a man may not even be aware of. Right. So, you know, if you come at her with, you know, the sex being a problem, she may be guarded 
and defensive and come back at you nastily. She may not give you a whole answer. It might be sarcastic or slick or something like that. But if you kick your feet up in the bed or on the couch and, you know, lay on the pillow and say, you know what, I want to have a conversation. I want to know if you're happy. You know, what can I do to make our relationship relationship better? Am I lacking in any departments? You know, is there something? And then if she says, well, what brought that on? Then you can tell her, well, I noticed that, you know, for 16 years, you were happy to have this kind of sex with me. And then for the past two years, you haven't been eager to do it. You haven't wanted to do it. You haven't even delved into that at all. And I want to know, did I do something to put you off to make you not want to do that? Because that's a way that we used to connect. And then you may start to get your answer. But the key is having a gentle, open conversation where you're encouraging comfortability. But, you know, if you started off nasty or if she thinks that you're having the conversation only from a self-serving perspective, you may not get the answer that you want and you might just perpetuate the problem. Absolutely. So. Good luck. Try to have that conversation. Don't bring up head. Don't bring up sex. <laughs> Just try to bring up what's been bothering you two and try to iron that out. And hopefully that fixes your problem. All right. Well, again, we appreciate all you guys for rocking with me and my wife, the Casey crew. Now, if you heard a little buzzing in the mic today, mm-hmm. I don't know what that was. I heard it. I, I really don't know what that was. I'm trying to sit here and figure it out while we're talking. I really don't know what it was, but it's not here now. Uh, I guess our equipment is just fickle. Yeah, well, we're getting it together. Well, it's only week two in the basement. Week two, but we moved. We were were in a bigger area. Now we're in a smaller area. I don't hear the You're moving all this equipment to try to figure out the best area. But this is a good area because I don't hear. Because it's confined. This is a nice little room. I don't hear the echo. The only thing is I heard like the heat on because you want the heat on. I did hear the of the heat for a little bit. Yeah. So we have to turn the heat off. No. You have to. No, we just have to find a no, spot gotta, that's not under no, a vent. You just got to wear a blanket. You put the blanket, wrap the blanket. I have a blanket around, on. Or get another one and wrap it around <laughs> you so it's nice and warm. Okay. All right. Again, we appreciate you guys for rocking with us. I'm DJ Envy. And I'm Kia Casey. And don't forget, you can always hit us up SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter, iTunes. Uh, if you want to... Uh, put the Batman signal in the air. We, you know, we, we can answer to that. <laughs> we look forward to your comments. I really do. Right. Or you can always email us the Casey crew at gmail.com. That's T H E E Casey crew at gmail.com. We'll see you guys next week. Toodles. Toodles.